right, so we just landed in the Sioux, uh, just heading out of the airport, and we're gonna go find a rental car. We're both doctors, we're married, and we love to travel together for work. Today, we've flown up north to Sault Ste. Marie, and we're here to help out with the doctor shortage. Okay, so this is now like the fourth time wow, that we've been in Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a routine down. So at this point, we have to get our essentials, groceries, whatever we need to make this week a success. Population 1100. Yeah. I think we've just made a discovery. Found these amazing gluten free, yeah. high protein tortillas. 12 so grams of protein in one of these things. Love it's amazing. It. And they look ripe. They look really good. Nice. Mm. Typical for breakfast. Goes with the cucumbers, <laughs> goes with the wraps. All right, it might seem weird, but we actually stock up the freezer in the hospital lounge. So anytime we get a quick break, we can make sure we're getting our veggies at work. Okay, the final piece is protein. Looks like you're only off to Cinnabon. Hmm, trying a new one. Never tried this before. Okay, here we are. Not too shabby. Okay, so now we just get unpacked and get ready for tomorrow. Okay, going to check out the gym. You know, we only got 15 minutes, you gotta run fast, you gotta run hard, and now we're ready to take on the day. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, day one. Day one. So is definitely the most hectic, yeah, <laughs> challenging we really day. Wrap our head around every single patient on All the list. All of them. Like 16, 17 patients, so. Okay. Should be manageable. Maybe we'll get out of here by eight. Wow, that would be amazing on yeah. day one. <laughs> this. Alright, my first four patients are down here in the emergency department. So I just saw a patient who came in after having fevers for five days and just feeling progressively worse. So many negative COVID tests. Um, and when he comes in, he has a high white blood cell count, his kidney function is a little bit off, suggesting he's dehydrated and probably an infection. So he got antibiotics, IV fluids, and he was admitted to hospital. Now, I just got a phone call alerting me that he has positive blood cultures and the bacteria that's growing is called Strep Gallolyticus or Strep bovis. Now, this may be an important clue because people with strep bovis in their blood are more likely to have colon cancer. So I want to go and call the gastroenterologist now and see if they can do a colonoscopy while he's in hospital. Yep. Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday would be great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, bye. Excellent. Okay guys, so I'm seeing this patient. She hasn't been eating and drinking very well because anytime she eats or drinks anything, she has horrible abdominal pain. So she came to the emergency department. The initial blood work showed that she was dehydrated, but really didn't give us any clues. The ultrasound was completely clear. So we're still wondering like, what's going on with this patient? So far, we've given her some fluids through the IV that's gonna help rehydrate her. And finally, the most important part is actually getting a camera down her throat to take a look in the stomach. And when they're down there, hopefully they can give us some answers. And if they do see something that they can treat, like an ulcer, for example, then we'll have our final diagnosis and our treatment done in one procedure. Yellow, looking for a female in white and red flower top. Very detailed. Black pants, yellow backpack. More All right. units proceed to do a documented search and report back to Switchboard. So a code yellow is when it's a missing person. And I don't know, Mark, have you ever heard such a long description? No, no Me neither. I really want to find this person. Yeah, it makes you a little bit worried. So I hope everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Attention please, cancel code yellow. Cancel code yellow. Good. Cancel code yellow. That's awesome. Okay. It is currently almost 11 p.m. Gotten through the list. All the notes are written. <laughs> Blood work ordered for tomorrow. Feeling good. Ready to go home. Ready to go home. <laughs> yes. Sleep for a few hours and then do it all again. Start again. Maybe tomorrow we'll see the light of day. The goal, yeah. Tomorrow, daylight. They've returned! Bring at last! Yes! You know, guys, I always think of running, you know, sometimes you wake up, you don't want to run, but when I'm on service, it's especially easy to motivate myself because every day I'm seeing patients who would love to run, but they can't do it because of their health problems. So, 
I, I always keep them in my mind when I'm running. I, that's funny that you say, I actually think of that too. I actually do. Try to enjoy what your body can do. Yeah. All right, day two begins. I feel like this is always a little bit better because now we know our patients. Yeah. We can just really focus on like the new ones. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Feels good. Hopefully we'll get over here before dark today. That is the goal. That's the goal. Okay, step one, print a list. Remember on the Never Have I Ever video, I was saying that I always have a cheat sheet I'm going around with. So this is my cheat sheet for the day. And maybe step one over there <laughs> is making more coffee. <laughs> Looks like I got three new patients. They're all sort of cardiac patients. A patient got an inappropriate shock um, from their defibrillator and then two heart attacks. Uh, looks like I have 16. I'm just searching for the last one. I didn't make it on my personal list, but I've been made MRP. So I just have to figure out who, the, who that patient is. Excellent. Okay into work mode. Yeah. So I was just following up on that patient with strep bovis bacteremia. And even though he's on the right antibiotics, he's still spiking fevers, which makes me wonder if the bacteria have attached to something, like infected an organ, or if they've gone into a bone, or sometimes it can even infect the heart. So I'm gonna order an echocardiogram to look for vegetations. That's what we call the growth of bacteria on the heart valves. Um, <laughs> I would love a banana. Enjoy. Thank you. So I'm hoping he doesn't have that, but we need to find out. So we'll see what the echocardiogram shows. And I'm also gonna order some more blood cultures and see if the bacteria is still growing in his blood. Like how active is this infection? All right guys, so a bit of a surprising term of events. So I just spoke with the gastroenterologist and it turns out that he didn't see anything in the stomach at all. So no answers so far, but one, rare cause of pain after eating or drinking anything is something we call mesenteric ischemia. So that's when there's a problem with the blood vessels in the gut, there's not enough blood flow, and the bowels are screaming for more oxygen. Only way we can really test for that right now is to do a CT angiogram. So we're gonna send her down, we're gonna get that imaging done, and hopefully we'll get our answer. Okay, I'm officially done, but Mark, He's hard at work over here. So he's actually on call for hospitalist. Um, so he is still working away. It's home call. So uh, I'm stuck here with him. No, <laughs> the reality is we have one car. So we go and we come together. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna make him a snack. This is where the vegetables we bought at the grocery store come in handy. So we basically treat this like our home. The only thing is I haven't found a knife here yet, so we've got to get a little aggressive. <laughs> All right, post call. Woken up at midnight, woken up at 3.30, so didn't Me really too. get, oh yeah, I wasn't sorry. even on call. <laughs> yeah, it's a two for one. We're both on call whenever one of us is on call. We did not make it to Oof. go running this no, morning, that's for sure. No way, I need that extra hour of sleep. Hopefully we'll... Exactly. <laughs> okay, so the patient had their colonoscopy this morning um, and I just ran into the gastroenterologist who told me that they did find a lesion. So it looks like it might be colon cancer. They took biopsies, but we won't know for sure until the pathology comes back. And the repeat blood cultures came back positive still. But strangely enough, the echocardiogram, the ultrasound of the heart, didn't show an infection like I was expecting. But we still got an important clue from the echocardiogram. This patient has a bicuspid aortic valve, meaning there's only two leaflets, whereas a normal aortic valve has three leaflets. And having a defect, an abnormality in the heart valve, means that the bacteria could latch on and grow into a vegetation. So you're probably thinking, like, why am I still talking about this if the echo is normal? Well, it's because this type of echo is an ultrasound probe on the chest. Um, it only gives you one particular view of the valve, but it can miss things. So I think we need to get another ultrasound but this time it's called the transesophageal echo where there's a small ultrasound probe that goes down the patient's esophagus and then gives a different view of the heart freedom and daylight <laughs> ah sadly mark is still working away he's had a couple of sick patients so i'm going to head out grab some dinner and come back and bring him some dinner here poor guy. All right, guys, so I have the results for the CT angio here. And as I suspected, there are major blockages in the major arteries of the patient's gut. 
So they're not completely blocked off, so it's not a surgical emergency, but if we want to fix her symptoms, we need to open up these arteries. And the only way to do that is to put a stent in. That's gonna open things up, improve blood flow, and that will treat her symptoms. Now, we don't do that here at Suera Hospital. The nearest center where they can do this is in Sudbury. So I need to get on the phone with the vascular surgeon in Sudbury. They'll take a look at the scans. Hopefully they agree with me, and then we can get this patient on a list to get this procedure done. And I'm back. I feel like we live here, but with some sustenance. Let's see where he is. It's freshy? Yeah. Oh, awesome, thank you. Finally done. You're done? Yeah. Wait, seriously? Yeah. What What are we doing here? Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. We can <laughs> actually make it out. There's sunlight out there, I promise oh. you. As promised. <laughs> well, that's one thing about Sault Ste. Marie is I actually find the sky is very beautiful. Yeah, I agree. All right, it's Thursday. Just got a text. I got no new patients today, so we have a recovery day. Hopefully, I can get in early. Fingers I haven't crossed. found out what I have yet, so hopefully, I won't hold us up. Uh oh. <laughs> I know. Okay, no major update for the patient today. Uh, he's feeling a heck of a lot better. And tomorrow we're gonna get the TEE, the transesophageal echo. So hopefully that'll give us some more information. And now I'm just heading to go and see my other patients. I've got about three new patients and <laughs> just follow up with everyone else. Okay guys, so I just finished speaking with the patient and she had a lot of questions for me. Like, why is this happening? So she has established coronary artery disease, so plaques in her heart. She also has peripheral vascular disease. And so this is just another expression of that underlying disease, that atherosclerosis. Now, unfortunately, she just has a lot of risk factors. She's been smoking for decades. She has high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and she has diabetes. So my role right now, while we're waiting for that procedure to happen, is I'm gonna start on some medications to manage those risk factors. And I was so happy I was able to get through to her. So she's willing to quit smoking. So I'm gonna start on some nicotine patches. I love how he uses his standing desk. See, it's pretty catchy, eh? It burrows into your head. <laughs> and that's all you can think about all day. As you're waiting. Oh, hi. Um, can you please put me through to radiology? Thank you. Okay. There we go again. It's a beautiful day. It surely is. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. I appreciate the call. Okay. Okay, bye. We have an answer. So that was just the radiologist giving me a preliminary report on the transesophageal echo that they did today. And it turns out there is a vegetation that we just couldn't see on the regular ultrasound. So now we can definitely say this is infective enterocarditis. And from what I'm hearing on the phone, it's not big enough that we need surgery or anything. I think antibiotics are gonna be fine. Okay, I'm gonna go and find him in his room and tell him the news. All right guys, I just got some really good news. The surgeon in Sudbury has put her on the list. So she's gonna be going to Sudbury, she's gonna be getting this procedure and she's gonna get that stent. And this is really important. Right now, I'm, I've been trying to treat her pain with, with opioid medications. And as we know, there's side effects, there's addictions. We don't want any of that, but it's the only thing that I can do right now for her. So once we get that stent in, we can get her off these medications. She's gonna definitely gonna be able to eat and drink a lot better. It's gonna be good for her nutrition. And hopefully we can start getting her back on track. All right, you can feel the weekend vibes. Beautiful Saturday morning. Saturday morning, fewer cars, but we're on our own. Yeah. No allied health professionals. No case reviewer, <laughs> no social work. No discharge planners. It's all on us. Oh gosh. <laughs> Okay, so it feels so good to have this diagnosis nailed down. We know the patient has infective endocarditis, doesn't need to have surgery, but he's gonna get antibiotics for at least six weeks. And obviously he's not gonna stay in the hospital for that long. So we need to put in a pick line. So it's like a big IV that can stay in his arm uh, so we can go home and a nurse can come in and give him antibiotics at home. But the problem is I can't get a pick line on the weekend. The pick nurses only work on Monday. So 
he's gonna be hanging out with me for the weekend. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he's super happy about it because it is gorgeous weather outside, but my hope is get him home on Monday. Oh, and a little bit of an update about a future video that has finally fallen into place. Do you remember in the Never Have I Ever video, we were talking about hospital food and Mark and I said we'd never tasted it before? Well, I approached the hospital and we are gonna get to do sort of like a taste testing of some various things on the menu. So I'm really excited. That's gonna be Monday morning before we fly out of Sault Ste. Marie. All right guys, Saturday night, chilling in the doctor's lounge. It is like 9.30 p.m. <laughs> I don't know where Mark is. I'm just gonna hang out. So basically he's on call. He's up seeing patients and I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm just chilling here. All right, so day six is a wrap. That's it, it's 11 p.m. We're gonna go get some food, probably at Shopper's Drug Mart. <laughs> and uh we'll make it work yeah and then we'll be back here in a few hours <laughs> okay so we have officially finished seeing our patients got some notes left do you probably do too oh, yeah. yeah yeah so we're gonna come back yeah, we can't waste this beautiful day exactly it's glorious and we've been invited by one of the local nephrologists dr shafi to come and go for a trail run our canadian goose friends apparently they normally mate for life so it's very Two lovely lovers. lovely to see them together <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just finished our run, and Mir told us that there's really cool waterfall around here, so let's go check, check it, it out. out. Absolutely, he can't help himself. Any gym equipment, we have to try. <laughs> it's amazing. This is like what five, five minutes from the hospital. Yeah, so one of the cool. many perks of practicing up here. Today is the last day of the week, so a lot of it's gonna be about getting things ready and organized, sort of teeing things up for the next doctor who's coming on uh, tomorrow. But I've gotta say, I feel so invested in these patients. Like I'm in some ways not ready to not know what the CT scan says tomorrow. Like you, you wanna keep following and find out what happens. But that's what hospital medicine is like. You know, you work hard for a week and then got a hand over that's pretty much the end of our week that's it yeah. yeah so do you guys like the day in the life the week in life do you want to see both this is fun for us yeah so let us know in the comments yeah let us know yeah. otherwise we'll see you in the next video so bye, bye for, for now, now. <laughs>